Howdy, I'm Guinness Walker, creator of a GTA lore series here on YouTube, Grand Theft Auto Biographies. And because of that series, I am often asked what I think about Rockstar's upcoming installment in the Grand Theft Auto franchise. So I thought I would make a quick little video about my thoughts and expectations, given what we know through official announcements and that infamous leak. So what do we know so far? Well, a decent amount, actually. Now, I'm not going to show any of it here for obvious reasons, but in case you weren't aware, last year, in 2022, there was a massive leak that likely came from someone working in Rockstar, and as a result, the public got their hands on seemingly hours of pre-alpha footage from versions of the game that were apparently old even at the time of the leak. Even if that's the case, though, and the footage we saw represents where they were at sometime in 2021, let's say, it's safe to assume that a lot has changed, and that the leaked footage is not representative of what the final game will look or play like, obviously. But it does give us an idea. If you don't know, video game development generally works in phases, with builds of the game slowly improving over time. There's an initial build that's bare bones, which is usually called an alpha, and then sometimes a more cohesive build that's closer to the final game, usually called a beta, before eventually a final release comes out. Now, my understanding of the leaked footage is that, like I said, it was pre-alpha, which means it isn't even close to what the final game will be like. But if you think that stopped people from speculating until the cows come home, you'd be dead wrong. I could go and verify exactly what we know by combing through forum posts and the actual leaked footage, but that's not what this is about. Instead, this is just what I'm expecting out of the game based on what I know that I just couldn't avoid, since, for me, I'd rather not let a pre-alpha build we weren't supposed to see color my expectations. I'd rather wait for the actual game to come out. So all of that aside, what do we actually know? Or rather, what do I actually know? Well, I know that the game is taking place in Vice City, which will be our first visit to the Sunshine State in the HD era that started with GTA 4. I know that we're going to have multiple protagonists again, two this time, a Bonnie and Clyde style couple named Jason and Lucia. And, well, that's about all that I can say with basically 100% certainty. Or at least, I think it's 100% certainty. I mean, I guess it's possible that even those two things could change between now and release, but I'm pretty damn confident in those assumptions. And that's about all that I've picked up without actively digging for more, in an effort to avoid spoiling myself too much. So knowing all of that, let's address the elephant in the room as I see it. Or the three elephants in the room, I guess. Leslie Benzies, Laszlo Jones, and Dan Hauser. Now, for the old-school GTA fans, those names should be very familiar to you, but for the newer people, you may not be as familiar with them. Dan Hauser is one of the co-founders of Rockstar Games, along with his brother Sam, as well as the former vice president of creativity at the company, serving as the head writer for most of the GTA series until GTA V. He left Rockstar Games to start his own company, Absurd Ventures and Games, in February of 2020. Laszlo Jones is a New York City radio host and media personality who served as an integral part of the writing staff for the GTA series, starting with GTA 3, and also produced most of the series' in-game radio stations, as well as portraying a fictionalized version of himself on the in-game stations like Chatterbox, V-Rock, WCTR, and more, working on and appearing in every GTA game since 3, released in 2001. In April of 2020, he also left Rockstar Games to focus on other things. And last, but most certainly not least, Leslie Benzies is perhaps the most important piece of the OG Rockstar Triforce, being the former president of Rockstar Games and the lead developer on every GTA title from GTA 3 to GTA 5 and GTA Online when it first released. He left Rockstar Games in 2016 over an unpaid royalties dispute that eventually he won after presumably reaching an undisclosed settlement with Take-Two Interactive, Rockstar's parent company, in 2019 after three years of litigation. He also went on to form his own company and is currently working on a new project. All three of these men were, in their own ways, integral to the personality, feel, and function of the Grand Theft Auto series throughout the years, and it's safe to say that losing just one of these guys would have been a blow to the future of the GTA series, but losing all three in the space of four years has certainly put some older fans, like myself, on edge. Since the loss of Dan, Leslie, and Laszlo, Rockstar Games has been focusing exclusively on GTA V's online component, or just GTA Online, which they effectively treat like its own separate game at this point because, well, it basically is by now. For better or for worse. Even casual fans of GTA, or people who only started with GTA V, will know, if you've spent even a little bit of time in GTA Online, that the quality can often be... lacking, shall we say. Certainly in comparison to what we'd come to expect from single-player games from Rockstar. Even though we get occasional story-based updates with returning characters like Lamar, Franklin, or whomever, the writing seems to have suffered quite dramatically at times without the likes of Hauser or Jones, even if Laszlo is still in the game. It seems like GTA Online gets more and more distant from what made me fall in love with the series all the way back in 2002, and that is a sentiment I know is shared by a lot of older fans. So with all of that being said, what are my actual expectations? Well, surprisingly not as bleak as you may be thinking. 
For one thing, we're returning to Vice City, easily my favorite location from the 3D era, and it's where I first started in the GTA universe. With GTA Vice City back on the PS2 being my first entry into the franchise, when I was way too young to be playing it. For another thing, when I'm thinking about GTA 6, I am strictly thinking about the single player game that we'll be getting, and not even considering the likely possibility of a GTA 6 online component, or the existing GTA Online somehow moving over to the newer engine that they're using for 6. Because of this, I am actually still expecting that whatever we do get will be really, really fun, since so far every single GTA game before Online, and most other single player Rockstar games have been among the top of their class. GTA 4, Red Dead Redemption 1 and 2, Max Payne, and even Rockstar published titles like L.A. Noire have often been among the best single-player experiences of their eras, and I will remind you that even though I'm still making my way through the game, most people adore the story of Red Dead Redemption, especially 2, and that game was one of the first Rockstar games that didn't have Leslie Benzies as the lead designer. Now, Dan Hauser was one of the writers, but not the lead writer, and Laszlo wasn't even involved in Red Dead as far as I can tell. And my point here is, while those incredibly talented gentlemen have been integral to Rockstar's success so far, they are not by any means the only good writers left on the planet, or even working for Rockstar Games, I'm sure. Them being gone does suck, but it certainly doesn't mean that GTA 6 won't or can't be incredible. So, in summation, Rockstar Games has suffered some heavy creative losses since the release of GTA 5 in 2013, but they have already proven they are still capable of releasing excellent single-player experiences, and I don't look at GTA Online as representative of the quality of a game or story that the team is capable of creating, even if that is arguably a bit naive. In fact, despite generally being a pessimist, the optimistic part of me wants to believe that part of the reason that GTA Online's story and writing hasn't been on par with the series' single-player experiences is a combination of the real-world talent being hard at work on GTA 6's story, and the fact that they just don't need to put a ton of effort into Online in order for it to keep printing money. Now, before I end the video, I'm just going to go over a couple questions I got from a viewer and one of my wonderful supporters, Dream Wizard. If you want my opinion on anything else related to GTA 6, drop a comment below and I'll try to answer everyone if I can. I'm going to just answer these off the cuff without a script, so here we go. Do you think Jason and Lucia will be on all the story missions and side missions together? Or do you see the potential for separate individual missions, like certain missions Jason does by himself, and Lucia having some of her own missions alone too, and or a third set that requires both of them together? Well, I would say probably the second one. Like, I would think that they have their own individual missions, and they also have a third set that's together. That's probably what would make the most sense. It's kind of what we got in GTA V. I don't imagine they'll be in all the missions together. That seems pretty unlikely, given that they established the formula of multiple protagonists, which means you can have different things going on across the map. So my guess is they'll probably start separated, is, is my assumption, and then they'll eventually come together, and then there'll be a third set, sort of the third act, if you will, where they, uh, they work together. But who knows? There's a lot of possibilities there, but I, I certainly don't think they're going to be completely separate. That seems... Or together all the time. That seems very unlikely, both of those. Do you think there's a possibility for a cameo or potential online missions from Franklin in GTA 6? Of the three protagonists from 5, he's the most likely to appear since he survives all three endings in 5. Uh, I think it's almost certain that we will see one of the protagonists from GTA 5 in, uh, in GTA 6. And yeah, it probably would be Franklin because Rockstar has the three endings for 5. And yeah, Franklin is the only one that canonically survives um, all three of them. But I also think that the uh, the third way is considered like the canon ending, which means that all three of them survive. So I really wouldn't be that shocked if they decided to go and bring Michael or uh, or Trevor back. Though it seems very unlikely that Trevor would come back because just because Stephen Ogg is kind of sick of the character because he's constantly it's constantly brought up to him in public and stuff. So I would think either Michael or Franklin would be more likely. And of the two, yeah, probably Franklin just because he's younger and you know more actively involved in the community, I think. But then again, so is, uh... Oh, I can't remember Michael DeSanta's uh, actor right now. Fuck. But, um, he's still pretty active, so maybe him too. But seems unlikely it would be Trevor. Since Jason and Lucia are seemingly a couple, do you think they'll take the idea of character hangouts from GTA V and turn them into short little dates for the two? I can also see hangouts with the friends they make along the way during the story. Um, yeah, I think that seems pretty likely. In fact, um, well, it, it seems like a good idea. I don't know if it's likely. But considering that they've kind of experimented with the dating system as far back as San Andreas, um, that seems like it would be a natural evolution. Um, especially because in GTA 4 we started to get the hangouts, in GTA 5 they kind of dumbed it down. So if they kind of did like a, a marriage or, or a compromise between GTA 4's, frankly, 
uh, overreaching friend system and GTA 5's kind of dumbed down system and, and then kind of brought it back to reference the San Andreas stuff too, maybe with the dating system. That could be kind of cool. Um, I think that would work pretty well, so I'd be happy with that idea. Well, that about wraps it up. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching, and consider checking out some of my other shows like GTA Biographies, GTA Geographies, and the ever-evolving Game Vault. And I would also really appreciate it if you gave some love and support to my wonderful executive producer patrons. Support the show by showing them some love, and once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you want to support the channel, one of the best ways you can do it is by joining the Patreon, and supporting those who support me. All patrons at all tiers receive access to all of the perks listed on screen for only $2 Canadian a month, or less than $2 American a month. But for those extra generous few who decide to pledge at the executive producer tier level, you can also promote your own content. Today's episode is sponsored in part by my executive producers Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, and Die Castinator. You can check out Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99 where they play games such as NHL and MLB, and story-based games like the Red Dead Redemption series, with plenty more story-based games to come. Mason Collins' podcast channel, We're About Everything, where they discuss, well, everything, from zombie apocalypses to game remasters and more. Chuck K45's channel, who's working on setting up a channel all about buying farm equipment, fixing it up, and starting a new farm from scratch. And Diecastinator's channel, where they examine, review, and discuss all things diecast, from the history of the hobby to rare models and much more, with new videos basically every day, in addition to buying, selling, and trading the diecast cars. All links in the description. A big thank you to all of my patrons, and especially those of you who have joined recently. Your support is quite literally helping me to keep the lights on, so from the bottom of my little black heart, thank you all so much. <laughs>